there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have another video in the Plain Air, plain air Postcard series for you today. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually sketch with paint a little bit because there's a lot of different, um, different elements here that you don't want to lose when you're painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, a little more... I'm just going to grab a few colors that are that I know I'm going to use and make kind of a neutral gray here. And um, I am going to sketch a horizon line about a third of the way down, just very, very lightly. Okay, so we got that. And then I am going to put in this little land area here and sketch, well, that should be over here a little bit more, and sketch that back. And then we're going to have another little land area there. Then we've got this area here. Got the beachy area. Up here we've got a little uh, kind of little island. I just want to make sure that I have room for everything because there's I've got a lot going on here and I tried purposely to fit as much as I could in this um this composition and because of that it's kind of i got to make sure i allow enough space or i'm going to kind of go off the rails and end up using up a lot of my a lot of my space okay you could do this with a pencil you could get a little more detailed with a pencil if you want but i typically don't sketch with a pencil when i am out painting so i'm going to grab a little ultramarine blue and a little bit of this uh i think it's I don't know what that blue is. It's kind of like a like a deep cerulean, I guess. I I don't know. It's not as light as I don't know. It's not as light as a cerulean, but it's not as intense as a thalo. And I need a little more of that. Get some of that up here, and I'm just kind of painting around my clouds actually, because I didn't have a paper towel while I was working. I don't think so. I was just kind of kind of making it up as I went and just kind of trying to paint around as much of cl much clouds as I needed. And I'm going to take a little bit of rose, permanent rose, add that into my mix. There's so many colors in this kit I have to be kind of be careful and sometimes I forget <laughs> what colors I used. And I just tapped into that sketchy gray that I made just so that I wouldn't be too purple. And I'm going to just get a wet clean brush just by squeezing out some water and just spreading that out a little bit so it's not too dark. I don't want a thunderstorm on my beautiful beach day. This is a beautiful secret beach that I would found that my sister and brother-in-law showed me and it was like 15 minutes from where I grew up and a fantastic beach. Oh my goodness, loved it. No, I'm not going to tell anybody where it is either. It's my secret. <laughs> Such a nice secluded little beach beautiful so warm too uh and i don't like cold water <laughs> all right now what i'm going to do is there's some kind of land mass back here it's uh, it's actually the other side of the pond i believe and i'm going to do my blue i'm just going to make kind of that sketchy gray but not quite so gray i'm picking up like just colors i know i'm going to use in the picture so it's kind of like a it's kind of like that Viridian green plus the blues that I've used plus, you know, the gray that I've already made. And I am going to put that in here. Again, to have it so you can see it around some of the other land masses that I'm going to paint in. I feel like it needs to have a little bit of violet in there too. So I'm just dripping that in there. And then I could start working on the water. Use I can use that same color back there. It's okay if it if it wicks down in there. I feel like pretty much anything is okay while you're plein air painting. You know, you're catching the um, the mood and the atmosphere of the place that you're painting. I I wasn't gonna do these. Um, these paintings as tutorials because it's kind of just something I do for fun. I go out and I sketch, you know, whenever I have the chance. But so many people had asked me to do them that um, that I said, well, and I did one of them, and people said it was helpful and they really enjoyed doing it. I think it's because the pressure's off. It's obviously um, a simple 
a simple sketch and I think people feel like they can do it and sometimes you feel a little overwhelmed if you see something else and it doesn't look quite as simple. Now for sand, I have recently started doing this just this year, I never did it before. Um, I've been using white and I've been mixing up my own kind of titanium buff color with white, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna. And it's so funny because some people that just abhor people using white, they're just like, oh my gosh, how can you call yourself a watercolorist? Um, will buy titanium buff. And I'm like, you're pretty much just using white. Did, did you realize that? It's, that's pretty much white. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of crazy. Um, but it does work really nice for sand, especially if you don't have a lot of time and you're painting the field. It's a great way just to just to kind of pull in some sand colors because it's a little more opaque. It's actually quite opaque, so you can, you know, get that sand back like as you're wading into water. What I like to do is kind of put it in like this and then squeeze out a little water and just kind of drag it out because I don't like to have this underneath too much. I, I will glaze some water over it just to make it look a little bit more you know, just because you can, you can glaze on top of it. I like it to look kind of like you're wading into the water and you've got those depths of, um, of sand and water going over the sand. But like over, I wouldn't paint this whole area here with it. Rather, I would just kind of squeeze out some excess from my brush and then I would just kind of wash it out a little bit so that it kind of tones the paper a little bit, just so there's not like a harsh start and stop area there. All right, so now I want a nice uh, bright area over here and that's... Well, let's let that dry for a second. Let's go over here for a minute. I'm going to do lemon yellow. I'm going to do a little of this viridianish color there. And I am going to... I want to cool that off a little bit, so I'm going to pick up some of this blue that we use for the water. I don't want this super bright back here. And this is just an island, kind of in the middle of the pond. And same over here, we've got this. I'm gonna put this, I have a little roll of masking tape. I'm just gonna tap that underneath there. There, you can still see that all right, I think. I'll tip it up from time to time, but that keeps the glare off and it helps me see my paper a little bit better. Typically, I'm sitting with this um, on my lap. So this is on my lap and this is kind of in front of me and it's very convenient, but when I'm working flat on a table, it's difficult to, to paint like this. Um, and I'll grab a little burnt sienna and some of that Viridian green. Look, it makes a nice dark umber almost. Um, and I can, I find that these are very inexpensive paints, but I still find I can do some, some complex mixes with it and not have it too muddy, but you do have to kind of consider that, you know, the more, the more colors you mix together, the more chance you're going to have mud, especially if you're using student grade paints. But to tell you the truth, I really haven't had any trouble with this. I don't have any trouble with Cotman. Some people are all like, oh, Cotman's are terrible. I like Cotman watercolors and I recommend them because you know what you're getting in the tube. You're getting what you pay for. You're getting the pigments you say they're using. And, um, and I don't have any problem with it. I know it's not as, they're not as sexy as some of the new watercolors that are coming out that are, uh, pretty cheap and have no information on them. But, um, but I like them. I think that Windsor Newton's a trusted company. So, so I like them. I like this too. You really can't beat this for the money. This is the, uh, whoops, I'm going to rinse my brush just because I haven't used that green. I don't really want to pull in a new green. Get the uh, lemon. I mean, because really, this whole kit, you've got you've got the um, paintbrush that comes with it. You have 24 colors. I've been using this for years, and I use it a lot, and I've barely made a dent. I mean, some of the colors, you can see the little divots, but you really can't beat it. I mean, for that price. And it's easy to find. It's a pretty easy to find set. You can get it at a big box store, you can get it online. Everybody seems to have it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry up a bit. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna add a little lemon yellow to that wash I just made. And I want this nice springy yellow green in here. This is like the marshy area where st stuff is really growing and very, very lively colors. I'm just dragging some of that, those colors up, making my little, making my little uh, grasses. And if I had my credit card scraper at the beach that time, I would have scraped some up, but I didn't have it. So I don't want to do that now because it's not going to look like that, um, mainly. I don't want to do too much on this right now with it being wet unless I want the only thing I'm doing here is stuff that I want to blend now I did have some rocks over here so I'm gonna take my um, burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue 
makes a, I'm not sure if that's actually burnt sienna, I think it's probably a light red because it makes a very purpley, purpley brown, so, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing, I mean, you're not exactly sure what's in these colors, but what the heck, I'm having a good time using them. Some people get way too fussy about, about stuff, I mean, come on, this paint's cheap, it works good, I'm not gonna get too, too fussed about it. A little brown in there. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let that dry before I do any details on that. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of shoreline over there. And... Okay, now what can I work on? Right over here is dry, so I think I'll do these foreground flowers. I'm gonna do yellow ochre, and I'm gonna do some of this viridian. And let's see what I get here. That's really dark. I'll do a couple strands of that. And now I want to do some brighter, so I'm going to go some lemon yellow. Don't worry, I'll wipe that off. And do a few little grasses of this. And this can give you the scale and make it look very um, three-dimensional, because you get something close to the bottom of the paper that's tall, and it gives you that that scale. Now you can do cattails there if you don't like these purple flowers, but I really like these purple flowers, so I'm going to do them. And I'm going to mix up the rose and the ultramarine to get that color. And just tap on a few of these. Could have a little more blue in there, I suppose. And then I'm also going to have some of this over here. And sometimes I'll tap it and let it blend out. Got to be careful, there's a lot of yellow over there that could be very muddy. Just get the impression of it anyway. And now over here I'm ready to work because it's getting dry, it's starting to get dry over there. So see, you know, it tends to clean, self-cleaning palette, it tends to clean its, itself as you kind of go through your painting. I found out uh, this week that my oven wasn't self-cleaning like my palette is. <laughs> it was so dirty, it caught on fire, it was awful. I went to preheat it to cook something and uh, something had spilled in there and it uh, caught on fire. So I had to look up a YouTube, thank goodness for YouTube, I looked up a YouTube video how to clean it. It's not a self-cleaning one, so I had to put baking soda in there and yeah, it was really gross. <laughs> I was thinking, hmm, I bet I could take all this crud and make carbon black watercolor, mix it with some carbon, some uh, gum arabic, but I'm like, I don't even use black watercolor. We don't need to add that to the world, it's better just clean my oven. My wandering mind, because I don't like to clean. Okay. All right, so now I can tell that my values in the water need some work. So I need to get a little bit darker. Let's see how that color that's already on my palette does. We got a little bit of that. I still need a little bit more intense of a color. I'm going to go with the ultramarine blue, and I'm going to take some of that Viridian. And that's getting there. That's a little bit better. Oh, yeah. And then if I happen to grab, get into some of those colors and it makes it kind of drag into the water, that's all right because you would have some reflections in between the ripples in the water. My When I took my daughter out kayaking and we were painting the other day and she was getting very frustrated with her kayak moving or things not being perfect and I said, honey, you know what? It's not going to be perfect. You're, you're painting moving things. You know the trees are moving, the light's changing from a moving object. It's not going to be perfect. You have to accept that and and find the fun in it, you know? But I know what it's like to be that age and want everything to be perfect. I remember that. In fact, a lot of adults don't draw better than 10 year olds because they kind of stopped trying once they became self-aware of, of how their paintings look, their drawings look, they become self-aware and they say, well, that's not how it really looks. And then they become frustrated and they stop trying. And I don't want that to happen to my kids. I don't want that to happen to anybody. I want you to keep trying because you can be really good at it and you can overcome the challenges. I'm just gonna dry this real quick and um, then we'll just see what we need for finishing touches. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of that uh, that violet that I had in my, my palette. I'm gonna grab it with some of the um, brown that I made, some of the grayish brown. Need a little bit more burnt sienna in there. That's a lot more. Basically, I want to make something that's kind of that's kind of like wet sandy color, and I want to add some of that in and around here. I like how that looked in my painting. 
And then I'm going to take some of that. I'll do a little bit more over here. I'm going to flick it on with a toothbrush. I didn't have a toothbrush with me. I, I kind of sprayed that my brush across and then just kind of did it with that. But really, I think next time I have an oil painting brush that loses its head. Sometimes these come loose. I'm going to save the end and just the brush. I'm going to stick that in my my travel painting bag because I really like uh, I really like the looks of that. And I'm just going to flesh out these rocks a little bit. And I'm going to go back in. And I don't clean my brush that much when I'm working uh, out, out and about because I find that that cross pollination of colors, that dirty brush painting, give makes everything look a little bit more realistic, and I like that. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That's all right. Did not mean to put that big brown streak in there, but that's okay. And I'll take a little bit of brown. My brush is too wet. Get a little bit of. Uh, There we go. Just want a kind of a pea green kind of color, brownish green. Throw in some reeds. A brighter color here. I don't know what you call the difference between mud and earth tones, but I think you call it earth tones if it's on purpose and you call it mud if it's not on purpose. But even though, I mean, I do see that my colors are much fresher. My paintings I do on location are always fresher, always look better to me um, because I'm there and in the moment I'm capturing everything and experiencing it as I paint. So it always seems to be a little bit of a letdown painting it in the studio because it's like, oh, it, you know, because I you don't. Whoops. Why am I using purple? Um, because you don't have. I did it again because you don't have that. Um, you're not kind of pulling from the experience of painting out in the world. So again, I hope you will get out and about and, and paint out if you can. I know it's not possible for everybody, but um, you know, if you can paint on location, it is so nice. And there, I think that finishes it up for us today. I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if so, give me a thumbs up. Share it with your other crafty friends that would like to learn how to paint. I love teaching and I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting.